So we're introducing Jacinta. She's the vice president of Lindblad, and she's going to be able to discuss our upcoming trip to the Galapagos Islands. It has been in my bucket list for a long time, so I'd love to share that that um, experience with everyone. We have a few solo and double occupancy cabins left. Once those are taken, if we can get the NHA booking them pretty quickly, then NHA members booking those pretty quickly, then this is a, an amazing opportunity. We have the possibility the entire ship would be whole food, plant-based, SOS-free. I envision meals similar to what you've been seeing served here at the conference while you're touring the Galapagos Islands on a beautiful um, Lindblad ship. Well, thank you again for being here. And so I'm going to turn start the presentation. So a little bit about Limblad Expeditions. We've been in business for over 50 years. The company was started by a gentleman called Lars Eric Limblad, and he was one of the pioneers in expedition travel, actually the first to bring non-scientific travelers to Antarctica in 1966 and a year later to the Galapagos Islands. His son, Sven Limblad, continues his legacy to this day and has actually expanded in his commitment and reach to many wild places since then. Our partnership with National Geographic is a wonderful partnership, and we have been doing this for over um, 14 years now. And that means that we have a National Geographic component on every single voyage. So it's a National Geographic certified photographer on board. So where is the Galapagos Islands? It's about 600 miles off the coast of Ecuador. Um, we run a seven day program on the Galapagos with two nights on either end. Um, so we fly into Guayaquil, overnight in Guayaquil, and then the following day we fly out to the Galapagos and then we spend seven days exploring these amazing islands. The Galapagos is very diverse. As you can see, it's got a lot of volcanic rock. And one of the reasons for that is that they've had some volcanic eruptions there over the years. But it is absolutely a stunning place, stunning landscapes and sunsets. We do all of our excursions by Zodiac. And these are little inflatable boats that take us out and get us into the far flung places, even in the Galapagos, even though we're on a small ship, it allows us to get to those inlets and places that you wouldn't get to even on a ship. All of the hikes and the excursions are included in the voyage cost. So there'll be days we'll start the morning, very early in the morning. Usually we start with a stretch class in the morning. There'll be refreshments available for everybody in the morning when you wake up at that 6 a.m. wake up call. Um, and then we'll start about after breakfast, we'll head out onto the islands and we can have a combination of long hikes, short hikes, medium hikes. Um, it could be a beach walk. It could be an elevated walk up to the top of one of the, the um, islands, or it could be just simply a beach walk along to find some amazing wildlife along the way. As I mentioned before, there is lots of different, um, there's lots of different um, types of hikes. So don't ever be afraid if you're, if you're not as perhaps um, agile as some people, you can certainly, we'll find something for you. It'll, we'll have a Zodiac cruise or a short hike, medium hike, or a long hike, depending on the, um, the uh, excursion. So of course, the wildlife is really what piques interest for everybody in the Galapagos, going to the Galapagos. The wildlife has never been hunted, so they're extremely tame and you can walk up to them. They don't even know that you're there. And of course, the other part is the iconic um, large tortoises in the wild. This is the giant tortoise that you see up in the islands in the, um, the island of Santa Cruz. We also go to the Charles Darwin Research Station, and that is hopefully we'll be back there. We haven't been going through um, through COVID, but we will be back there hopefully next year or cl uh, closer to the end of this year. And this is where we see some of the research that's happening in the Galapagos. Some of the other animals that you will see is the Galapagos fur seal. You'll all see the Galapagos penguin. And whales, there'll be lots of opportunities to see whales as well. And of course, this is the blue-footed booby that everybody goes to see. And they can also see the red-footed booby. Um, here, as you can see how close you can get to the wildlife, great opportunities for photography as well along the way. 
the large iguanas on the different islands where they blend right into the terrain. Um, and there's hundreds and thousands of them just lingering, waiting to, to be seen in these areas. And again, they change the color depending on the rocks that they're on, they will change color to blend in and become part of the, the environment. So much of what we do is above the water, but also so much of what we do is below the water. So every day there's opportunities to snorkel. We have all the snorkeling equipment on board. We also have the wetsuits on board, the shorty wetsuits. Um, and February is a great time of year. So you should not be very cold. The water should not be as cold as it would be perhaps in July and August, but there'll be lots of opportunities to get out every day and snorkel, snorkel and swim. You do not need to dive in the Galapagos. Um, and I don't believe that there's diving offered on this trip anyway, but there is so much to see um, from the, the surface of the water. Um, we have a whole fleet of kayaks. So there'll be opportunities to get out on kayaks as well as paddle boards on board. And if we have any children on board, we'll also have some fun with our National Geographic um, Explorers Program, which is dedicated to um, some to children. So there'll be lots of engaging opportunities for children as well. One of the things, because of our partnership with National Geographic that is indigenous to us and tends to be a real focus is our photography program. So we'll have a National Geographic certified photographer with our guests at all times, and they will be there to help take better photographs, take good photographs, teach you how to use your, your iPhone. Um, but again, you don't need to be um, an experienced photographer, the wildlife is so close, there will be wonderful opportunities to get up and take, um, to be able to photograph some of the, the wildlife there. Um, but it's our commitments to sustainability um, that we're really proud of. We have um, the world's first 100% carbon neutral expedition company, caring for the planet and exploring is in our DNA and it's reflected in everything that we do. So everybody will get a nice bottle, water bottle when they arrive on board and you'll be able to take that home with you. Um, since 1997, we have donated about $9.3 million to local operators in the Galapagos Islands, supporting local artisans, research for the national park, creating new environment stewards through a program in our, the schools in the Galapagos. And most recently, we raised about a half a million dollars for the Galapagos um, when, during COVID when they had absolutely um, no tourism whatsoever. So we're there to support them because they provide an amazing experience for our guests. And this extends to pioneering the farm to table program. Here's Anna, who's our vice president of hotel services for Limblad Expeditions, right there in the middle with the logo jacket. Um, so what we do is we oversee the dining experience on the fleet. She also has a team focused on sharing local flavors through local chefs, growers, producers, artisans, and cultural leaders. This is all about fresh food from scratch, meals that they can share with vibrancy and the diversity of the region. Anna, of course, has been working very closely with Wanda and Lisa to create plant-based without added salt, sugar, or oil um, for our guests on the NHA program in February, 2023. Our team has expanded our farm to table program with vegetables and microgreens, all been grown for Limblad expeditions in the islands. So we have a specific um, grower that grows all of our food there as well. Um, these are some shots from a recent trip that Lisa took with us um, aboard a Limblad ship. So I'm going to flip through these just to give you an example of the type of foods that you will be experiencing also in the Galapagos Islands. So lots of great fresh vegetables, um, lots of beans for your protein, um, just a nice presentation for everything that we do. And again, you know, very much um, special meals. Anybody who has special special requests, we can accommodate that on board as well. But they get they, again; these are just some samples of what we do. And of course, we have this wonderful um, organic um, desserts as well that we work with some of our local bakers on the islands. And and this also, as I mentioned before, protects um, and shares the wealth with the community on board. 
So a little bit about the ship, the National Geographic Endeavor 2 is the ship that you would be traveling on. And she is 96 guests. She's got beautiful, this is our, our main sort of area where we do all of our lectures. So it's got these beautiful open windows, lots of great light. Um, so this is where we will do all of our lectures in the more in during the day, but also in the evenings as well, and where you'll have an opportunity for some of your um, speakers as well to speak um, on board. Um, this is our dining area. It's open seating, but if you need somebody a table to sit with somebody at a particular night, we can always make that arrangement for you as well. Um, then we have a spa service on board. We have a full service gym as well. And then whatever we can, we always try to do some of the meals outside, weather dependent. Of course, the weather should be really good that time of year. So we'll do some really great plant-based barbecues up on top as well um, so that we can enjoy the evening sunsets and, uh, and share that experience. Here is some of the cabins that's on board. This is one of the suites. These are our regular um, lead-in cabin categories. And these um, can be, the beds can be pushed together to form a queen bed, or you can have two single beds in the cabin. And these are our A, R, B, and A suites. So they've got these big, beautiful floor to wheel ceiling windows on board. And these are our bathrooms, some nice spacious bathrooms as well. And as Lisa mentioned before, we also have a, an escape to the land of the Incas, which is Peru. So we have six people booked on that right now with the NHA. NHA um, and we can add up to 16 guests comfortably on that. So if anybody has any interest, that's a great opportunity. We'll take the train up to Machu Picchu, where we will overnight at the one of the Belmont properties up there. Beautiful, beautiful area. So you can wake up very early in the morning and really walk out and spend some time in the ruins all by yourself. Um, and then, of course, to see a lot of the indigenous culture there, um, you will see a lot of the very, very colorful folks um, in that region. And then I just wanted to mention that included in the cost of the voyage, we have the bar tab, Wi-Fi, pre and post hotel nights, transfers on group flights to and from um, the hotels, our park fees, all of our daily activities, our expedition team, our National Geographic um, Global Explorers program, also our photography program, that will all be included in the cost of the voyage. So for reservations, are, um, you can reach out to Lisa, and this is Lisa's contact information here. Um, you can reach her by email, or you can also reach her by phone at this um, address. So pull out your phones, take a photograph of this. And um, the other place that Lisa can also be reached is on the NHA website, and she would be loaded located under staff. So... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I hope to, ho hopefully we'll get some um, of you to join us here on this wonderful trip and to share this with Wanda and Lisa on board who will both be traveling. Thank you, Jacinta, that was great. I am so excited about this trip. We have just a couple of minutes that we'll stay on before we go back to the main stage to hear Dylan. And I'm gonna just read some, Jacinta, can you see the questions coming in? Yeah. Yes, um, I can see, I may have missed it, but do you need to be vaccinated and boosted? Yes, we do require everybody to be vaccinated, um, fully vaccinated, which does mean to be boosted as well. Um, we did require a PCR test, but we have just um, eliminated that right now as of this week. So we do not need a PCR test as of right now to travel that three to five day window in advance. We ha however, we will test everybody at the port. So right before you get um, in Guayaquil, before you head out to the Galapagos, we'll give everybody an antigen test. Um, but I would really recommend that when, if you do, and hopefully we'll, you know, we'll have left COVID by then, but uh, um, if you do make sure that you take that antigen test before you leave home as well to make sure that you're not, you're not um, positive. So Jacinta, I have a question. Um, for those that are thinking about booking, they have to um, get to Guayaquil in Ecuador, correct? That is correct. So you fly from Miami 
Um, there's also a flight from Houston directly to Quito, and we can accommodate that. If somebody would prefer to go to Quito, we can do that. We do recommend, though, that you stay with the group and fly into Guayaquil. So you can fly directly from um, Miami into Guayaquil. It's about an hour, four hours and 15 minute flight. And then once you get there, we will have somebody meet you and transfer you to the hotel, which is um, called the Ara Verde Hotel. It's about 10, 15 minutes from the from the, the airport. So, but we'll we'll set up those transfers in advance for you. Okay. And and given the flight situation right now, uh, we are recommending a pre-night before the cruise. Uh, and I can certainly arrange that with the Lindblad Groups Department, uh, but we do recommend flying in on the 16th rather than the 17th, just to give yourself padding in case there's a delay or cancellation. And Jacinta, I know when Lisa and I were looking at which companies we wanted to partner with to do this, um, we looked at Lindblad um, largely because of your sustainability and they we only have a minute but if you could quickly address the sustainability program of Lindblad yes so as i mentioned in uh, during the presentation the sustainability sustainability is really what our company was founded on um lars eric Lindblad, who is the was the father of ecotourism and he actually started out as a conservationist preservation um and he he really got into travel by accident. Um, he felt like by taking people to these far from places that they would come back and be advocates for the conservation and preservation of the places that we travel so that they're there for our children, and their, you know, your grandchildren to travel to. But everything that we do is focused on that. And we're very, very careful um, about what we offer. We do not serve shrimp or any of that type of thing that is harvested in a way that we're we're extremely focused on so we do um as i mentioned everything that we do is um supported by the whole idea of sustainability and we're 100 percent right. car carbon neutral as well on all of our ships all right um, thank I you so much jacinta we really appreciate your time today